This is a day of remembering the greatest, most merciful soul which has come to this world to save us. I offer my most humble obeisances at the lotus feet of Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. His kindness to accept me as his spiritual son has given a totally different meaning to my life. Or let's say, it has given meaning to my life because previously to meeting him, my life had virtually no meaning. So, <clears throat> I offer my obeisances to his lotus feet and I am praying that Srila Prabhupada may bless me and all of you <coughs> that we will not go astray from the path of Krishna consciousness, the path of devotion to his lotus feet and to Krishna's lotus feet to the beautiful Vindavan, the beautiful Mayapur, the beautiful Jagannath Puri Dham, the beautiful uh, deities he installed uh, or inspired to be installed around the world. We, we are struggling without him. We have missed his, his directions. We have missed his, his company very much. Many years have gone by, but by <coughs> extraordinary mercy, we did receive the company of Srila Bhakti Rakak, Srila Maharaj, and Srila Bhakti Pramod Puri Maharaj, and Srila Bhakti Vaibhav Puri Maharaj, and so many other senior devotees. So it's not that we were totally on our own, but still. The, the pain of the separation of Guru Dev <coughs> and specifically his ability of directing and organizing Krishna consciousness for the Western minds <gasps> created a very great gap which was not able to be filled even by all the others together because, well, they didn't go to the West. Srila Purimanch never went to the West. Srila Sridhamanch never went to the West. And, <coughs> and the West is just a different world, you know. India is also changing now. It's trying to become more Westernized. We are, we are not very happy about that, but still it's a different world altogether. And this, this different world we have received by Prabhupada's grace. By Prabhupada's grace we, we have come into this different world, into the Krishna world, into the Bhakti world. But you can see if you look how popular yoga and Ayurveda is around the world, you can see it's it's not only that we were attracted to Prabhupada, it's just the whole world is attracted to India. The whole world is attracted to Vedic wisdom. The whole world wants to get out of this Western thinking and this capitalization and this uh, <coughs> conglomerates and, and huge <coughs> corporations which are just dominating the world. And if there would just be some companies who could make good money, that's one thing. <coughs> but they are not only doing that, they are so greedy, they're harming the world in so many ways. So it is, uh, it is something very worrisome. And we are tired of it, we are tired of seeing everything being destroyed slowly. Tired of the La Conquista of the conquest of, of people, which was just like the most, the most horrible thing happening to this planet was the expansion of so-called Europeanism around the, the world at the point
point of slavery and and um, and torture. You know, we're talking nowadays about uh, the rights of Mother Nature. We are talking about the rights of the rights of the animals, but. Factually speaking, there's not even human <laughs> rights. There's no human rights. It's it's just ridiculous. The 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 human people in this world have absolutely no no rights when it comes to uh, when it comes to the interest of the powerful. <coughs> So if the humans have no rights, then what rights do you expect the animals to have or Mother Nature to have? This is now some people are fighting for the rights of Mother Nature, some people trying to defend the animals, but considering that even the human beings have ra hardly any rights in the face of exploitation, something which Srila Prabhupada totally explained and recognized because when you read the Srima Bhagavatam and you touch upon the subject of exploitation my goodness you know Prabhupada had the thing so clearly down <laughs> so amazing uh, that it is absolutely uh, like he writes Gradually, the mode of goodness declined during the Treta and Dwarpara Yugas, and the general mass of people became corrupt. In the present age, the mode of goodness is almost nil. And so for the general mass of people, the kind-hearted, powerful sage Srila Vyasadeva divided the Vedas in various ways so that they may be practically followed by less intelligent persons in the mode of passion and ignorance. It is explained in the next shloka as follows. Stri Sutra Dvija Bandunam Trayina Shruta Gochara Kalma Shriya Simudanam Shriya Ivam Bhavat Iha Iti baratam akyanam kripaya muninakritam. Out of compassion, the great sage thought advice that this would enable man to achieve the ultimate goal of life. Thus, he compiled the great historical narration called the Mahabharata for women, laborers, and friends of the twice born. In other words, Prabhupada says here. The friends of the twice-born family are those who are born in the families of Brahmanas, Kshatriyas and Vaishyas or the spiritual cultures families but who themselves are not equal to their forefathers. Such descendants are not recognized as such for want of purificatory achievements. The purificatory activities began even begin even before the birth of a child and the seed giving reformatory processes called Garbanana Samskara. I mean, I don't know how many people practice Garbhadana Samskara in India nowadays. I have a serious doubts about it, how many people actually practice this. And so, when the parents do not practice this, then the children will also not be of that quality. Garbhadana Samskara basically means to chant many mantras, 50 rounds on your japa, pray, 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 and then you invite a child into the under the heart of the the woman you who is your wife so this is this is a sacred sacred connection no so otherwise uh, any relationship is just is just just a moment of pleasure and a moment of pleasure yes or what i mean the monkeys have a moment of pleasure all the time here and there and they are not even having illicit sex because for them it is the natures uh, of their essential desires has become like this. Whereas if human beings are cautiously, uh, cautious, unconsciously, just have sex for the, for the pleasure of the genital at the moment, and they avoid having children and stories like that, well, that, that is definitely something which destroys the purification. Now, it's like sin, sinfulness, there's one thing, it's sinful, 
And the other thing is, it's not good. You know, one thing is bad and one thing is not good. Okay, what we are missing nowadays is the purification part. The part where people actually see everything as a spiritual unity. Where husband and wife unite for God's service. No, that is missing. It's, it, <laughs> last not least, even the Asuras, when they have a child, they're proud of their child, they want to take care of their child, you know, generally, you know. I mean, people are not very conscious, but still they take care of their kids, you know, and sometimes very nicely. I mean, how many people pay for their, uni for, for their kid an expensive university? I know many people, they actually, they, they, they almost go bankrupt so they can s send their child to a prestigious school. But, so this is there, there is some sacrifice and there is some, but there's no, no purification <coughs> and without purification things just don't go well purification is just you i mean if you want to have a child why not have a purified child that's the question no? why don't you want this a real purified <coughs> and it starts i mean the garbhanana samskar is only one of many ceremonies you know and if you don't have a wife who wants that, or if you don't have a husband who wants this quality of association with the couple, with the uh, partner, well then, what is it all about? No, it's no, no happiness. There's nothing, nothing transcendental going on about this. So therefore, Prabhupada says, the purificatory activities begin even before the birth of the child, a seed-giving reformatory process called Garbhadana Samskara. One who has not undergone <laughs> such Garbhadana Samskara or spiritual family planning is not accepted as being of an actual twice-born family. The Garbhadana Samskara is followed by other purificatory processes, out of which the sacred thread ceremony is one. This is performed at the time of spiritual initiation, you know. We took initiation by costless mercy, you know. That we got the initiation, we got the Brahman initiation. This is something Prabhupada gave to us. And this is the day of Prabhupada. That's why we really, he introduced purification, purification to us. He said, I made a school for Brahmanas. People can become Brahmanas, even though they're not born Brahmanas, but they can become Brahmanas when they connect with this spiritual, spiritual energy. After this particular samskara, one is rightly called twice born. One birth is calculated during the seed giving samskara and the second birth is calculated at the time of spiritual initiation. You see, <clears throat> you should not underestimate the importance of these mantras and these processes. Like sometimes we say, well, that was just a ceremony of one day. Well, the guru just spoke a mantra into my ear and and he gave me some instructions. So then, so, so what was the big thing about that? Well, according to the Vedas, the purificatory rites are the transformation situations, moments, because you accept, you enter, you enter into a relationship of great love, tender love and care, where Krishna is actually entering into your life. One who has been able to undergo such important samskaras can be called a bona fide twice born. Second birth, he is twice born. You get the Gayatri Mantra, you become twice born. That means you are actually now a full representative of your spiritual master. You can and should do things as if it was him. Why? Because that's what the world needs. The world needs twice born, it needs in the second, uh, second birth of spiritual awareness and for the baby in the womb this uh, spiritual awareness came about by the mantras chanted by father and mother to unite for that purpose of bringing a devotee into this world so not only that he is purified but he will also be a special spirit because you know in all the uh, the seeds which are floating around in this world well what is the seed of a saint? <laughs> what is the, that uh, 
spermatozoid uh, destined to become a saint by combining with which woman's egg? Well, this is not, this is like top most secret. Top most secret. What's happening there? Because only Krishna knows. He knows who has chanted which mantras. He knows which soul is looking for a body. He knows where the seat is. Everything is orchestrated by the Supreme. Every single thing. You cannot think, and you should not think, that babies are born out of accidents, you know. They just drop out of nowhere just by, by some by some unwanted thing. No, even if the children are not twice born, they're still precisely karmically rewarded. In other words, if your parents are demons, well, then you're born in a demon family. That means your demon karma is there. If your parents are nice, you don't know, you know. It is everything in relationship with the parents is completely auspicious. It is you are getting a human form of life. <coughs> now, how auspicious that will depend on many other elements, whether you get the association of a sadhu, whether you take that association, whether you take shelter, whether you get the mantra, whether you cultivate the mantra. All these elements, they are essential. All these elements are totally essential in our life. So we are, we are very eager, we are very eager to give Srila Prabhupada uh, this, what he has come to give to us. You know, he did not give Mumbai, Delhi or Calcutta to us. Of course he brought us there too. He gave Vrindavan, he gave Govardhan, he gave Mahamanta, he gave Prashad, he gave Srima Bhagavata, he gave Bhagavad Gita. I must tell you, Bhagavad Gita is more important than all the cities in India together. Bhagavad Gita is more important than all the cities in the world together. Bhagavad Gita is the word of God and given to us in such a sweet way. Number one, how Krishna gave it to Arjuna, and number two, how Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada gave it to us. The Bhagavad Gita <coughs> given in such a unique way you know and such people like Siddhanti Maharaj like like Goswami Maharaj like our Mangal Maharaj and all of you have been attracted from hearing this Bhagavad Gita it has touched us transformed us not only the Bhagavad Gita also the Prashadam and also the Kirtan and also the Sadhu Sangha but the Bhagavad Gita is essential if any one of us would read Bhagavad Gita and find a book full of contradictions and which doesn't make any sense would we be here doing Parikrama would we be here doing anything no we would not because this is something very unique very unique is our uh, Bhagavad Gita and the Shima Bhagavad Gita and the Chaitanya Chaitanya. I mean, we don't only have the Bhagavad Gita. Prabhupada gave us 50 volumes of Bhagavatam. He gave us he gave us nectar of devotion and books of the Goswamis, all the Goswami Granta. He gave us he gave us an unending unending amount of valuable, treasurable jewels. That's Prabhupada. And so we are celebrating his disappearance today, which I don't even want to think about it. Of course, it's a festival because he went back to home, back to God. Like we say this, we say, hey, what's this? Prabhupada came back to Goloka. Can you imagine what that's like? He's like the ambassador. He went all around the world preaching Krishna in Kali Yuga to the people. He gave them Krishna. And now at the day of his Tirubhav, he returns back to Goloka. And everybody in Goloka receiving him. There is a big applause. Hey, you did it. Come on. Incredible. And Krishna hugs him. Hey, come on. You're back here. Oh, yeah. That was quite, an, that was quite a mission you did there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now... 
you know, we are almost 40 years later and we are still inspired by Prabhupada's invitation. We are still, <coughs> everything is still going on. It has not changed. Krishna is still the same. The temples are growing. Uh, more people are taking shelter of Lord Ch Chaitanya and Srila Prabhupada. So, so Prabhupada's gift to the world, this is a, it's really a permanent gift. Yeah, there also has been some problems, like not everybody has been such a... He's small, but already a rascal. Srila <laughs> <laughs> uh, Prabhupada has been uh, the, the star, the star of our life, and always will remain so. Srila Prabhupada uh, his influence is completely valid and even though these little problems in the institutional part and how to how to serve Krishna in the separation of the guru that, that element has been there undoubted, undoubtedly but uh, this is not the essence this is not the the main main issue <coughs> it's just natural it's just like in the children amongst the children sometimes they fight uh, they don't really have a reason to fight but the ego and all that the immaturity they fight uh, Rishi and Seva fight sometimes uh, yes. <laughs> and then they're twins you know they don't really they love each other they see they look alike but People manage to fight, you know. It's just for nothing, you know. Even in the temple, people, devotees fight. They shouldn't. <coughs> they shouldn't. What to say? What's the use of fighting? You know, um, it's really nothing. No value in it. But still, we fight. And so this immaturity, it is there. And also, we experience that, you know, after Prabhupada left. And not not everything was so perfect, but. Those who wanted to go on serving Prabhupada, they are going on serving Prabhupada, both sometimes outside of ISKCON, sometimes inside of ISKCON. But those who want to serve Prabhupada, they go on serving. <coughs> and in the end, it's a, like we say this famous saying, time will tell. No, well, who's really a, I mean, who was the most sincere servant of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur? Uh, many, many were, but the most empowered for preaching beyond the question of a doubt was A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. That is something we will not have any argument about it. As a matter of fact, nobody would dare to argue about it. Who was the most empowered of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur's sons for spreading Lord Chaitanya's message around the world? Well, that was his Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. Period. I mean, the difference is like one to a hundred if you want to say it like this. But we don't see it like that. We don't say it like that. Why? Because Prabhupada may have made thousands of Westerners devotees, but are thousands of Western devotees more value than one Indian devotee? The answer is no. It's all for one and one for all. In the devotees, we amongst the devotees, we do not have this this value consideration. You cannot say, I trade one devotee for a hundred, you know. It, it, this doesn't work that way, you know. And if you see the work the other devotees did, well, it's also marvelous work. So it's not something you say, Prabhupada was great, and therefore the others are really have done nothing. That's a very offensive mentality, very offensive, uh, because each and everyone did what Krishna wanted them to do, allowed them to do. Not all of you are going to the, do the same in your life. Some of you are going to be great pioneers of preaching through the atheists via OIDA therapy. Some of you are going to uh, reach great influence in your region. Some of you may become famous by what you do. Some of you may open a temple. 
which is the one most wonderful temple, pure temple for for chanting and for 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 reading. Another one may make publications like Ramdas. I mean, amazing publications of Mandala Media. Nobody has seen such beautiful books before, as before that. So in in this way. Uh, <coughs> We actually have to say that that uh, Prabhupada's outstanding contribution is a joy for the whole Sampradaya. It's there. If any son does anything extraordinary, all should be joyful. So same way, if any one of you does something extraordinary, all of you should be joyful. Otherwise, it's envy. If you're not joyful for the good things your brothers do, you are envious, that's all. And envy is the cause of material existence. The envy, the, the, as envious as you are, as problematic your life. So, so this is practically what Krishna Conscious is all about curing ourselves from envy this is our very beautiful a very beautiful process that's why you should always open your eyes and see what your brothers and sisters are doing at the same time you should also make sure you do something wonderful but not in envy in, in sharing like I'm trying to make a spiritual family, the Vrinda mission. I'm trying. I'm praying to Prabhupada that this mission will please him. I'm praying without that, my life and my work would be useless. So, and I'm praying that my God brothers also accept this service. God brothers sometimes are not so generous. They're not, not always generous. Sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. <clears throat> I wish for you, and I leave that here documented, I wish that your whole life you will be proud of what your God brothers do, even if they don't work with you, even if they don't work in the same department, in the same country or anything. If you want to be a happy lad or a happy girl in this life, be happy about what your brothers do. Then you also do something great. But if you can't do anything great, just make sure you are proud of what your brothers and sisters do. Then you have already guaranteed a lot of nectar. Just like in our Harmony School of Conscious Art, how many wonderful songs have been composed? I mean, George Harrison was very famous. Why? Because he was a Beatle and he was very rich. That's only his his songs are not better than Bhakti Vinod's or or than than Mangal Maharaj's or Kripa Kripa Ram's. It's not that his songs are better. They're just another beautiful songs. Of course, he made beautiful songs, but he was famous and rich, and he surrendered to. Pra no, he never really surrendered to Prabhupada, but he gave a lot of money to Prabhupada. He bought a temple for him. He made Krishna conscious famous. He printed for the Krishna book. So. He was very dear to Prabhupada. Prabhupada gave a valuable ring somebody had given to him. He gave to George Harrison as a gift, you know. So, means he had high appreciation, high appreciation for this, for this soul who came as the son of Hari, Hari son, uh, who came and to help him in the spreading of Krishna consciousness. But in my work, as the, as the member of the Harmony School of Conscious Art. <coughs> Many George Harrisons I've heard, heard and seen. Many great talented musicians. <coughs> and we are making music every day, new songs. In cart we have so much and we could do more, but there's no time to listen to so much music. We have to do other preaching as well, but, and the sculptures and the painters, my goodness, do we have some talented artists, no? So if you don't feel like this, oh, incredible, all these Vaishnava artists in our family, so incredible. If you feel like this, then you're not envious. And then you can enjoy. Then you can enjoy.
Like for example, there's one art I'm so I'm so impressed by. <clears throat> when you go to Mayapur and you see the Prabhupada Pushpa Samadhi. On the outside of this Pushpa Samadhi, they made artwork burnt in kilns, which has on bricks laced colored and burned artwork it's a kind of an artwork which is probably still going to be there after thousand years after thousand years i could imagine this artwork is still there because this burning things like vitrification this is very solid so amazing i don't even know who did it but it is so beautiful and so well done and so permanent. So we will utilize the same system when we do our our new, uh, truly, our yoga planetarium in Colombia. We will utilize that same type of art so that it will be just something. Ah, Kijai. <laughs> so we have to learn it, how to see, how to do it. So, yes making beautiful things for Krishna. So I've been over, better said, uh, like Nimai or Nimai, born in our family, Prabhu Kanka's son. What a painter, what beautiful drawings he makes. So talented, incredible. And the mosaics he made in, in Buenos Aires in the temple, that, those mosaics, they're so extraordinary. They're like a life. They're like better than the original mosaics made in Italy in the Middle Ages. No, his mosaics, they have more character, they are more more beautiful in their life. So, he made Gornitai, Krishna, Balaram, Sita, Ram and Lord Nishinga. They have four mosaics, huge, huge things. Unbelievable. Huh? So, this is like what we are having. So, are you proud? Are you happy? What do you want? What what makes you happy? Are you happy because you have new devotees? Like, let's say, you have uh, God brothers and God sisters. Well, you better be proud of your God brothers and God sisters. If you're not even proud of your God brothers and God sisters, like Narayani, who is having a birthday today. <laughs> Prabhupada's disappearance day, this girl appeared. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Uh, so, uh, if you're not proud of your brothers and sisters, well then what a rascal you are, what a <laughs> stupid idiot. Uh, you're not proud of your brothers and sisters? Come on! Like he has two sisters. Actually, more than that, but I know. Tuku and Hashi. <coughs> Actually, I love them very much. I'm proud of his sisters, you know, because they're so nice ladies and they want to serve Krishna and they're all their life they're going on. And they never lived even in a temple. They are living like home, but still very nice devotees. We should be proud of each other. We should be proud of Damodar Hey, what a guy is he, you know? What a preacher, what a wonderful thing, you know? We are proud of, we are proud of our children in Krishna consciousness. You don't know how proud I am when I see the, the children of Ranch or all of us here, the mothers also here. You know, I feel like, oh, 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 look at this family we have here, you know? <laughs> huh? I'm, I'm proud. Why? Why I'm proud of them? Well, because I saw them growing up in Krishna consciousness. I and even now we still have love relationship, heartfelt relationship. If I'm if I wouldn't be proud of them, then what? Am, what are you going to be proud of? Of a house? Because you bought a house in this world. One earthquake goes, cock, 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 and the whole thing is on the ground. <coughs> We were there in the earthquake in in Concepcion. We had a big, big temple in Concepcion. Very beautiful. It was rented, fortunately. It wasn't ours. But after the earthquake, it was about to fall apart. So it was declared unlivable. Poor owner. Poor owner. You got a big house and now it's finished. Now, now you have to spend the money to take it down again. 
I mean, that's a big work to take a house down. Uh, it's called demolition and pay for it to bring it all away. No, 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 no. That's very depressing, you know. I mean, if I, I never had to do that. In my life, I didn't have to demolish anything and take it away. That's a very painful thing. So, <clears throat> proud of a house? No. Proud of a car? People are proud of stupid little metal, metal boxes with four wheels on it? No, this is useless. Yeah? You can be proud of art, you can be proud of people, you can be proud of literature or accomplishments like that, no? But to be proud of a bank account? Oh, I got a bank account in Switzerland, a number account. Yes, oh, yes, I have, I have a million dollar in my number account. Now I'm very proud. You stupid fool. All this money in Switzerland is good for nothing. Just properly, they're finding things, some slaughterhouse with your money. <coughs> and you're just getting a little interest. And you don't have done anything with that money. Your life is useless. Your money is useless. You want to be proud of a bank account? Really? You want to be proud that you can spend more than others? Well, if you spend for something good, that may be another reason to be happy and proud. That may be there. If you if you get money by Krishna's mercy, by Lakshmi Dev's mercy, and then you utilize it and make something wonderful with it. Wow. Harivol, harivol, harivol. <laughs> Otherwise, waste of time. <laughs> Everything wasted. So, I want you to be happy. So, be proud of Prabhupada. Then you can be proud. He is my grandpa. He is my grandpa. Yeah, but if you want him to be your grandpa, you, you got to behave like a grandchild of Prabhupada. Huh? You can't say, he's my grandpa and I'm in the bar. Huh? Sitting in the bar. No, 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 no. The grandchildren of Prabhupada are those who continue this twice-born process of purification. <coughs> One who has been able to undergo such important samskaras can be called bona fide twice-born. <coughs> if the father and the mother do not undertake the process of spiritual family planning and simply beget children out of passion only, their children are called dvija Bandus. These Dvija Bandus are certainly not as intelligent as the children of the regular twice born families. In other words, hey, listen to this. You have illicit sex, you mean it means you'll get a pretty dumb child. Why? Because you're dumb. Dumb produces dumb. That's why. Huh? Simple way. What to speak of child coming from rape or from other things. This is a very complicated situ situation. Uh, the Dvija Bandhus are classified with the Sudras and the woman class who are by nature less intelligent. The Sudras and the woman class do not have to undergo any samskara save and accept the ceremony of marriage. Now look at this. <laughs> This is what Prabhupada writes. And what does Prabhupada do? He makes women Brahmins, leaders, worshippers of deities. In other words, this is if you don't take shelter of Krishna. Don't think that women are less intelligent if they have taken shelter of Krishna. And don't think a man is intelligent if he has not taken shelter of Krishna. A very important point. We can, we don't want to go into the detail today, but I guarantee you, when the Vedas say that the women are less intelligent, then they contradict that when the Bhagavad Gita, where Krishna says, "I am the intelligence of the woman." Now, how does that work together? I tell you why. Because the women, they have spiritual intelligence. And that spiritual intelligence comes out through Krishna in them 
when they take shelter of him. Then, material intelligence for just making calculations and this and that, that's not the women's inclination. They may do so if they really try, but it's not the inclination. Why? Because they're much too much mother. And mother is mother. She cares. She's love personified. If I'm taking care of three kids, you think simultaneously I'm going to write a book about mental speculation of Western philosophy? You just take all the philosophy books and throw them in the garbage and say, come on, let's just let's be nice to each other, you know? <laughs> Forget about all this stupid philosophy. So what, what we have here, you know, is very important, no? If you take shelter of Krishna, you, anyhow, nobody has any reason to feel bad about it because it is a sudras and vaishyas and women. So what is this? This is more than half of the society to begin with. No? First of all, women are one half and the other, more than the other half, are sudras and vaishyas. No? So there's a few kshatriyas and a few brahmins, you know. So we should understand that we should first of all be humble. First of all, be humble. You should start saying, oh, I was born in a Sudra family. Oh, I was in a Mlecha family. Oh, I come from Deutschland. Actually, it's funny. The word Germany, in Germany, when they say Deutschland, Land is Sanskrit, is, is Stan. Land, Stan. It, it Deutsch is Deutsche. Is, is the root of it, it's Deutsche. So Deutsche Stan, Deutschland actually means the land of the demons. That's what it means, according to, and the Germans, they never figured that out, so they kept the name Deutschland, <laughs> proudly. Huh? We are the demons of Europe, and truly they are. <laughs> it's not a wrong word uh, for the wrong people, it's the right word for the right people. <laughs> so, so what can you say? I mean, it's just one example of how, how, Sadhu? Sadhu Maharaj? Yes. <coughs> yes, yes, I sent him. Immediately after we talked, he ran off to talk to Govinda Maharaj. Yeah, Go Govinda Maharaj, I'm sure he, he, he will come and speak nicely about Prabhupada. Yeah, it's... Okay. Yeah, I was just con waiting for Ramananda confirmation, but I'm pretty sure it'd be like that. Yes, of course, of course, as soon as I got confirmation, I also confirm with you. <coughs> no, this is Malati's number. This is, this is not my number, this is Malati's number. Oh, Maharaj, I, I know my phone is, I, is still the same. I just don't carry it all with them, always. My, my phone, who has my phone? It's downstairs. It's charging right now. Okay, sorry for that, Maharaj. Jai Radhe. So if you think I'm less intelligent, no. Who says I'm less intelligent? Well, just by saying that, you are proving that you're less intelligent. <laughs> Trick number one, no? Huh? Huh? I am not less intelligent. I'm a great intelligent guy. Yes, a great fool you are. Congratulations. We just give you a certificate. Less intelligent. Huh? You get it certified now. Hmm? So, Sudras, Vaishyas, women, Kali Yuga, Mahabharata. Okay, okay. You know, you should be less proud. You should say, Paramgatim. It says that even the less intelligent like those and those and those can reach the highest destination if they take shelter of Krishna. 
That's what you should be happy about. When you hear this, Shriya Vaishyas Tata Sutras Te Piyanto Param Gatim, then you should go, Haribo! Haribo! You should dance in joy, in ecstasy, and tears should stream from your eyes. By Krishna's grace, even I, who I am one, Sudra, Vaishya, woman, whatever, can reach the highest destination if I take shelter of Krishna. Then you understood a little bit. I know some people, they read that, they say, what? This is male chauvinistic. This is against women. This is uh, against the female. Why they say women are less intelligent? Why they say sudras are less intelligent? What about the dictatorship of the proletarians? You know, actually, you know, you, we have to admit we are all less intelligent. If we are not less intelligent, then I ask you the question, why were you born in this world? This is the absolute proof that you are a stupid fool like me. Welcome, brother. Huh? Stupid brother, welcome. Hey, you're just as stupid as me. That's why we came to this world. Of course, Arup is not stupid, but uh, because he's chanting Hare Krishna. Uh, I am stupid. You are stupid. Okay. Uh, so, so they, the, this, this is so nicely explained. The Vedas give such a nice explanation. We should all be humble. We should all be humble. We should all be humble always. We should not... Uh, we should not feel arrogant. We should not feel superior to others. We should not forget Krishna at any moment. That is the instruction, no? What's the problem of saying I'm a fool? It is proven fact that you are a fool. And to be born in Germany, you must be a double fool, I think. Huh? I don't know about Czech Republic and Poland. Maybe they get a little bit benefit there for not being that tight, yeah. But they're not much better. They're eating meat also. And they, no? And I just read this morning what the Portuguese did when they started going with their ships around the world. They were terrible, these Portuguese. My God, so brutal, terrible people, you know. Shameful. And the Dutch are not better. And the English are not better. No? And the French had colonies too. And the Germans didn't want to stay back, and they made colonies too. So nobody escapes. Nobody escapes from this. So, we are stupid people. If anything makes us intelligent today, it's the grace of Sri Hari. If anybody, anything helps us and gives us a good existence today, then it is Prabhupada. It is by Prabhupada's <laughs> grace he made us intelligence, dignified, everything. The less intelligent classes of men, namely women, sudras, and unqualified sons of the higher caste, are devoid of necessary qualification to understand the purpose of the transcendental Vedas. For them, the Mahabharata was prepared. The purpose of the Mahabharata is to administer the, pur the purpose of the Vedas. And therefore, within the Mahabharata, the summary Veda of Bhagavad Gita is placed. In other words, the top book we are just glorifying is for the less intelligent. Bhagavad Gita is for the less intelligent. The less intelligent are more interested in stories than in philosophy, and therefore the philosophy of the Vedas in the form of the Bhagavad Gita is spoken by Lord Sri Krishna. Vyasadeva and Lord Krishna are both on the transcendental plane, and therefore they collaborated in doing good to the fallen souls of this age. The Bhagavad Gita is the essence of all Vedic knowledge. It is the first book of spiritual values, as the Upanishads are. 
The Vedanta philosophy is the subject matter for study by the spiritual graduates. Only the postgraduate spiritual students can enter into the spiritual and devotional service of the Lord. It is a great science. And the great professor is the Lord himself in the form of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And persons who are empowered by him can initiate others in the transcendent loving service of the Lord. So this is it. This is the clear picture. If you are taking to devotional service, you are a graduate. I mean, don't be proud about it. But if you are actually, if you are actually, if you are actually doing devotional service from the heart, giving Lakshmi to Krishna, giving your time to Krishna, preaching Krishna's glories, chanting Krishna's name. If you're actually doing that, I must honestly say, you must be a graduate of the higher sciences. This is not possible. Nobody can do devotional service if he has not been extremely blessed. Even if he doesn't understand anything, but if he's doing devotional service, he must be extremely blessed. This is so highly, highly glorified, this process of bhakti yoga, so highly glorified. And we are here doing this service. We are trying to do this service for Prabhupada. So, I can only say this. Prabhupada is our star and our god brothers and god sisters are his children everything done in devotional service is so valuable that it can be treasured forever i mean whatever you do because it is like sukriti it's sukriti are transcendental jewels in your treasure box the pearls, the jewels, the diamonds, the rubies, the sapphires of your life is every mantra to chant, every time you pick up garbage in love, every time you donate to a spiritual master, every time you make a beautiful temple, every time you make a beautiful festival, everything and everywhere what you do is absolutely majestic, fantastic for Krishna, your translations. How is the book coming in Bulgarian? Tell me, Mansarova. It's getting there. Huh? It is getting there. It is getting there. Wow, this is such a hard work. You don't know how grateful I am you're doing this work for Bulgaria. It's very... Actually, yesterday you should have come with us to our meeting. I forgot to invite you. We had a very nice Oida meeting. But you went on the Parikrama. Yeah, that's all. So I... And, and sometimes we forget that you actually speak Spanish. <laughs> it is so... Uh, amazing. So... Prabhupada. Okay, we finished this. So anybody who is actually absorbed in Krishna, he can initiate others in the service of Krishna. You know, that's a Shiksha Guru. Every new devotee, let's see who's here. You are doing this work in Prague. Hmm? He's doing it in Leipzig. What, what do I have with Leipzig and Dresden? Terrible, though. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, in Dresden, he's in Dresden doing this service of receiving people and preaching. He's doing it in Rio de Janeiro. That means he's a Shiksha Guru in, in Rio de Janeiro. I don't know. Dana Kelly preaching in Australia? You're preaching there? Look at this. I have a representative in Australia now. I'm proud. I didn't know that, you know. Wow. Well, actually, I do know, but I didn't hear much. Uh, 
Prabhupada is doing Vishnu Priya Ashram Oida therapy. He, Paramananda, he has a he has a beautiful preaching center. He's preaching to everybody there. <laughs> Incredible. Saraswati, she had a beautiful preaching center, but she said, I go to India and help my spiritual master make a few beautiful things. <laughs> So like this, everybody is doing something. Now Krishna Kirtan is putting Radzlav preaching on the map. Huh? Well, better so, because otherwise what you do there? Huh? We have to do something. Nityananda is preaching Cordoba. Hmm? Prabhu Matavrata was in Kali. Now, sometimes we do that. After somebody has been temple president for a while, we send him for purification to travel from temple to temple so just that they can purify themselves help the devotees and also charge their batteries because sometimes when you're too long in one place you also go a little bit uh, you get too accustomed with things after two or three years this is a very good thing to do pilgrimage we call it you can imagine in South America pilgrimage takes over a year because ever so many temples there if you visit every temple <laughs> and only stay four or five days. <coughs> the year is over before you finish the journey. <laughs> <coughs> and you meet so many wonderful people. Ramananda, what's the news? He came here. Make it. I go and bring him. He's uh, very happy. I'm on the way to call. I must come. Okay. So call Sadhu Maharaj confirmed. Confirmed. So then also, uh, Confirm in our kitchen that's 50 people more eating here today. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. 10 o'clock is the program. They come a little later, no problem. We have time for everybody. Also, we got the mayor to come today. He wants to come also, very happy. Yes, and the chief police inspector of Vindavan also coming today. So we have to make nice decoration there. The Prabhupada very happy about this. You know how happy Prabhupada is. Prabhupada, then Mayor of Vindavan is coming to his Vyasapur, to his Tirubhav Mahotsav. <coughs> These things are like good things of life. Yes. If any higher devotee. I remember all of the our Grand Guru Deva Shiva Popa Bhukti Siddhanta Shashuri Top Kanoko Kamini Potishka Bhagini. Please, any higher devotee for a for uh, go to a uh, post uh, of any or, or any organization, Vishnu organization in our Sharasa Gore Sampada, if he don't get, get this post, he makes jealous and he makes crazy. Why this Guru? <laughs> Well, maybe because he's like Arjuna. You know, when the Pandavas, they were asking for administration, then they were, uh, you know, they were saying, hey, uh, you don't want to give them the kingdom, then at least give five villages for them to manage. You remember, no? And then Duryodhan says, not even as much land that they can put a needle inside. Then we said, okay, that's Kurukshetra war was announced at that moment <coughs> when Duryodhan said that. So sometimes people want to do a service and they cannot, you say they become jealous. Maybe yes, maybe not. Krishna knows, Krishna knows every devotee's heart, right? Maybe they need another service somewhere else. <coughs> when two devotees were fighting, it happens sometimes, then Prabhupada would say, come here my dear boys. So you don't like him? You would do things different than he does? You really think you can do the job better than he? You say, yes, well, but I don't like it the way he does it. Great. You go to Hong Kong and you go to Sydney. And now you make two nice programs for Krishna as good as you can. Bye-bye. <laughs> huh? Let me hear of the news. That's how Prabhupada did when the devotees were upset with each other. So, what you call jealousy, let's call it transcendental jealousy, if it's devotees, you know. <clears throat> but you say they also become sometimes crazy. Well, there's also maybe some Maya in their head still. 
this is but this is between Krishna and them and their guru we cannot consider the abstract we know according to the scriptures not all devotees are in the proper frame of mind there's many apparatus which can be committed there's many uh, many things which just go wrong because they do something wrong so this is separate we will not discuss the problems of others much less in public and much less without a specific case doesn't make any sense you know it's like talking about lust well lust is something how it's haunting everybody but some people control it and some people don't so in this way <coughs> we we have to we see that ambition come come on come come and and pratishta these three they're very difficult to control it says even devotees especially pratishta hmm? well, why i'm not mentioned here why my name is not put here in this why i'm not given a post but it is krishna's laughing oh you want to take more responsibility very nice come 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 i know many people like ramananda they don't want to take responsibility i have to force them say you take care of all these people now there we make another preaching center and you're in charge ramananda said well 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 if you say so then i have to do but like he's not ambitious he don't want that it's not for oh i want to be a big leader in italy you know no not like this so there's different you know <laughs> some people like uh, a little bit you can say those who think they are not they are and those who think they are they are not something like that those who think they're guru they may be not guru and those who think i'm not a guru maybe they are guru Mm -hmm. So in this way, <coughs> yes, pride comes speak before the fall. So what to speak if pride comes before the fall? Uh, then um, what about uh, when we fight with other devotees? This is not not. Uh, not good. I just want to sing a song of Prabhupada. I hope it's here. Beautiful Sachi son. It's Sarva Bhama Bhattacharya. Krishna. Here, <coughs> Krishna, you've shown such great mercy to this fallen soul, <coughs> but for some need you've brought me here, now show me the goal. There must be some work to do here, I can only guess. If not, then why bring me to this terrible place? Modes of ignorance and passion cover them inside. Without taste for talks of Krishna, they are satisfied. If you show your causeless mercy upon everyone, it will become possible for you this would be fun what could help them understand this rasa deep and full show mercy and i'll place them lord under your control by your own desire maya controls everyone and your marriage could destroy Maya's illusion. If it is your desire to rescue all of them, they will surely hear your message and will understand. These talks of the Bhagavata are your avatar. <laughs> If one listens undisturbed, 
with ears <laughs> over over <coughs> those who hear the talks of Krishna gather virtues within their heart rotten desires are cleansed away from the soul of a truthful devotee with all bad things nearly destroyed always serve the devotees of God who's glorified with exalted verses then devotion is firmly established passion and ignorance leave the heart along with lust as well as greed so fixed up in pure goodness one becomes completely happy that mind fully enlivened in union with God through devotion realizes all the truths of the Lord and victorious freedom all the knots which pierce our heart and misgivings are cut apart all our karma is terminated having seen the Lord of our heart they will finally attain freedom from lust and from ignorance inauspicious things in their hearts will then become banished oh how will they understand your urgent greatly topics I am very small and fallen with no power to do this but you've brought me here O oh Lord your message to tell since this is your wish, O oh Lord, please and do this now. Lord, you are Jagat Guru, master of this world. You have the ability to decorate my words, showering me with your mercy. <laughs> my talks will be pure. The sadness of all who listen will then be removed. If you've brought me here, O oh Lord, just to take me dance, just to make me dance, I will dance and dance, my Lord, I will dance this way. <coughs> like a wooden puppet, O oh Lord, I am dancing your way. <coughs> if you've brought me here, O oh Lord, just to make me dance, I will dance and dance, my Lord, I will dance this way like a wooden puppet, O oh Lord, I am dancing your way. No bhakti or knowledge have I, yet my name is big. With the name Bhakti Vedanta, kindly now fulfill it. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. This was Sri La Prabhupada on the Jaladuta, praying for divine grace for the world of bhakti, giving bhakti to the world, giving Bhagavatam. He invited us to Vrindavan so that we can dance and chant with the devotees. Srila Prabhupada is so great. He has fulfilled what his humble aspiration was simply to get us into this divine family. So Goranga in Nityananda empowered Prabhupada and this beautiful <coughs> poem tells us what he did. Now let us join together to celebrate his Vyasaput. This morning we will fast for him so that we can intensify our feelings of separation. So this is uh, our, we will have our, our program inside, uh, inside the temple room. And if anybody of you wants to quickly go and make a little shopping for Prabhupada, something you want to buy for him or oh, this was one thing I want to correct for the future whenever we make this brother and sister meeting uh, and gift ceremony which was actually very sweet but from now on we should think about spiritual gifts 
the gift should have some spiritual meaningfulness, not just a little scarf or a little bag. This is also not, not bad to give such things. You know, we utilize practical things. But for the special brothers and sisters ceremony, it's really wonderful if we give something which has a very spiritual meaning, which has something like like our Radha Kunda when she got the no, Lalita Kunda. No, Radha Kunda. When, when she got the gift from this little uh, little Gopal, no? She almost fainted out of joy. She couldn't believe that gift, no? the little Gopal. So it should be like our gift should be something like which make person, oh, Krishna, it's too bad, what's going on? Something sweet. You can still wrap it into some cloth, but this, the essence of the gift, should be something spiritual, something uplifting, enlightening. And Vrindavan is full of such things. Just utilize a little bit of your intelligence, a special picture or this and that. But this is this what we should do in the future. So, uh, Gandharvika, please remember that for next time, brother and sister gift ceremonies. So let's go down and decorate very nicely. And because we have two special, special guests, Govinda Maharaj Acharya of the Krishna Chaitanya mission. So, special guests today. So we should make a special, something special. And make sure you have a little poem of something for Prabhupada.